here I am, sat with the man who 15 years ago was charged with the responsibility of bringing back a BBC institution, Doctor Who. Um, I'm very privileged to be talking to Keith Boak. Hello, how are you? How are you? Uh, I'm very good, John. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for asking me. So, Doctor Who had been off air for 16 years. Um, this was heralded as the BBC's next big thing. So no pressure then? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, it was pressurizing at the time. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, you, you, you'd be crazy to sort of not be aware of the, the expectations people had. You know, you'd been kind of handed something that was a sort of national treasure and, and everyone was kind of conscious that it was happening and everyone was very concerned about in what way it would be reinterpreted. So, so yeah, it was... It was something to be aware of. It wasn't something to be ruled by, and that was the difficult thing. Um, but it was something to be respectful of, and I think that's the, that's the thing I've always tried to say is, look, I was a fan too. I grew up with it. You know, I had my doctor, and I had my love for it, so I was really passionate about the show. So I wanted it to be as, as kind of respectful and kind of honor, honoring what had gone before, but at the same time trying to find something new about it that, that kind of, you know, brought a breath of fresh air for a modern audience. And that, that was the only real brief, was, was to honour it, but, but kind of, uh, you know, rejuvenate it in some way. Um, you said you, you were a fan and you had your own doctor. Who would you regard as your own doctor? It was John Pertwee. Oh, OK. <laughs> the great John Pertwee. He was, he was my doctor. When I was a kid, you know, when I... I think, I think you know, I, I stopped watching it after a certain age. I can't remember when that was, but... I was kind of transfixed on a Saturday afternoon, you know, for, for a significant period of time. And so there you are directing the Autons. Do you actually remember watching the Autons on screen as a child? I think I do, you know, I think I do. But whether I genuinely do or whether I've just seen it in the past, whether the Autons were part, I can't even remember John Pertwee in the Autons. But, you know, over the years I'd have seen the Autons in one of the earlier ones, with, you know, with William Hartnell or or, you know, one of the other doctors somewhere. So I, I knew who the Autons were and I knew the, you know, the hands and the guns and the, you know, so, uh, so yeah, it was, it was, it was something I was aware of, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure quite where my baptism for the Autons was, but I certainly know where my baptism later was when we, when we were in Cardiff. So, so yeah, it's, it, um, you know, obviously they're very dear to my heart now. So that's, yes. uh, that's uh, that's where that goes without saying. You you mentioned the the hands and the guns, and I I could say the, the sheer delight I had fifteen years ago watching that first episode air, and you used the original sound effect for me as a diehard fan. That meant a lot. Yeah. Oh, good. That's great. I mean, it was so many things we wanted to to retain, you know, including the theme music and everything, the TARDIS. It, it was. It was different, but it, it never departed significantly to make people feel that we'd somehow just thrown away what was always precious to everyone. And that was precious to me. You know, I'd grown up sort of loving that and that. And um, it was just finding a, a kind of new pathway through it. And I think so, it was, you know, I'm, I'm pleased you did that. And I'm, you know, we still worked on the principle of how the autons would move and, you know, and, and yeah, much was the same, I guess, you know. Did you go back to the original episodes and sort of material for, for inspiration? Wow. I must have done. I probably did. I probably certainly watched some back then. But I think it was so removed, you know? I mean, there'd been such a gap. And television had changed so much. So I think the idea that we would have taken inspiration, you know, I think there was plenty of inspiration already within us. Um, I know for a fact we did look at other things with regard to the TARDIS and, and, you know, and I probably did. I mean, it's 15 years ago and I can't exactly remember. I probably did look at the Auton episodes. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, without a doubt, they were inspiring. They were inspiring just because they were inherently in us, I think. And, and so much of, of what Doctor Who represented was, you know, deeply ingrained. So, so yeah, I'm sure we referenced... And then I'm sure we kind of took what we, what we kind of understood to be of value and just moved forward in whatever way we had to. 
we talked at the beginning about the, um, the importance that the BBC were putting on this show. Did you feel you're working under more scrutiny than you had on previous television productions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of chiefs. So, um, and uh, a lot of people had their, their stake in it. And it was, yeah, it was, a, it was a juggling act, you know, I have to say. And, and I'd like to think, you know, you look back on these things and, I, you know, there's a huge amount of delight I have about it and the fact that it's still going and so forth. But of course, I look back and think I could have handled that better or that differently. I have absolutely no doubt there are things that I wish I'd done slightly differently. It was a difficult beast to kind of maneuver because of course, yeah, it had a lot of people involved. It had a lot of people uh, kind of wanting it to be something incredibly special. Um, and yet a lot of the resources weren't necessarily supporting that, you know, that it didn't necessarily have the super duper budget that, um, that it, I imagine it even has now, but at the time it was considered significant, but in retrospect, it certainly wasn't. And I think the ambition of the project was certainly clear. And, um, and yeah, so there was a lot of pressure and a lot of aspiration. You know, we, we were very ambitious with what we were trying to do. And I think, I think everyone just tried to do the best they could, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I admire that amongst everybody who was on it because, you know, there were a lot of unknown territories that we kind of ventured into. You know, that was the first show that had used CGI on British TV. You know, no one had really worked with creatures, you know, in that kind of prosthetic work, uh, you know, on any significant level. And, um, and so it was, yeah, it was a, it was a number. And, and having to kind of juggle all those elements, as well as having to kind of, you know, wear a diplomatic hat at times to ensure that, that everyone kind of got what they what they were hoping to get, and that I'm sure was not 100% achieved. But um, but I, you know, I I think everyone did what they could at the time to to kind of produce the best show we that we could possibly make at that particular time with what we had. You know. And and how did you find Russell T Davis as the showrunner? Was he very hands on? Uh, he's very ha no, yes and no. He's terrific. So let, let's start there because uh, you know, and and he his vision was very clear. And he, he, um, he was very, not hands-on, but very specific about certain things he, he, he wanted it to be and certain things that he felt tonally it should be and so forth. Um, but in other ways, he wasn't hands-on. He's not standing over your shoulder kind of telling you how to do things, how to shoot things. Um, uh, so his, his positioning was, you know, incredibly good. You know, he's very clear about what it is that's important to him on the, on the piece and the story and the, you know, and the, and the, and the kind of the overall concept of, of the show. But at the same time, he, he entrusts you to, to deliver on that, um, given that information. So, so he's a, he's a good, good showrunner to work with. He really is. You just mentioned the tone of the show. Um, obviously you've had a lot of discussions about tone and style. What would you say the, the key words, the buzzwords that kept coming up for this, this new reader? Can't remember. Really <laughs> I'm sure there were some, but I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I can remember now what they were. I mean, you know, it was, it was, it was very much, you know, it was, it was I, I guess overall it was it, those things that I've mentioned before, which was to be respectful, but at the same time to, to, to be ambitious and to, to seek to kind of shift it into a into a, a contemporary form uh which meant that it needed a dynamism and energy and I, I think that's one of the things that that i was always keen to get that this was this was about saving the world you know and i think russell was very clear about that as well it was about everything was life and death saving the world the planet was at risk and these were big concepts and therefore you can't dick around you've got to you know people have to act and be decisive and you know create action you know and so it had a sort of pace and energy and drive and momentum I think those are the things that that I was trying to bring bring into it and um and I think there's no doubt that you know and, and I think it's fair to say there were tonal errors you know in the early early stages and that happens with shows until you know what animal it is that you're creating and I think Russell would probably say the same you know that there were certain choices made that subsequently wouldn't have been made you know that about the type of you know show or particular episode that, that was going to take place and I think 
And I think tonally it found its feet. And I, I think that quite often in shows, I've seen it in other shows that I've worked on, you know, that up until about episode five, it doesn't quite know what it is and the actors don't quite gel. And then suddenly they find something and hit a momentum and a rhythm and the whole unit does. And you, the show just understands what it is, you know, and it's shed some of the kind of slightly looser elements. I've seen, sh seen shows that have started sort of semi-comedic and then they've realized that actually the, the kind of essence of it is the serious aspect. And then they've just shed that kind of comedic element and just pursued something which, you know, is more substantial and, and, and that, that makes more sense to the show. So I think with, without a shadow of a doubt in series one, that would have been the case with Doctor Who. There were, there were certainly episodes that, that kind of, you know, were totally questionable, even episodes that I did. So, you know, that's, that's, that, that, and they probably wouldn't have happened. They certainly wouldn't happen in a series now, but that's the learning curve. And I think that's fair. That's fair to, to, to make those, you know, those kind of, not, not errors, they're, they're just kind of tests. They're kind of experiments. And I think any show that's worth its salt and that is brave, is kind of making those kind of choices to see where which which kind of limit you can push, and I think, and I think we did that, and then slowly Doctor Who found what it was meant to be, and which episodes really, you know, the tone of it which shone, and how it really needed to continue, and I think then they they were able to get a consistency going, and and here we still are, fifteen years later, so that's great. It's done good, it's very good. Yeah, we haven't actually talked about the the leads. Um, how did you find Chris Rexon and Billy Piper to work with? Um, they were really enjoyable in many ways. Um, they, they were cast before I came on the show. So they were already, so Russell effectively cast them and, um, they, you know, they, they worked incredibly hard, both of them. And I think that's, that's the most important thing to say, uh, about, uh, you know, about that. Billy was relatively new. She's delightful. She's hugely talented. She's gone on to great things. Um, Chris was very experienced at the time. There were occasions when he and I perhaps you know, didn't see entirely eye to eye, but, you know, he did the best he could at the time and he was pursuing, you know, trying to deliver the best possible interpretation of the Doctor that he could. And I was trying to do the best I could at the time. And that, that now is all that really matters, I think, is that, you know, we somehow produced a show that, 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 that is still running. And I, I kind of look back and I go, well, you know, that's a good enough result for me, I think. It's easy to forget now um, that, as you said, this was very early. I think this was really Billy Piper's big TV break, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, understandably, she would, I've imagined she'd been quite nervous. She was, but she took, you know, she's, a, she's such a smart, talented person. So she was nervous to a degree, as anyone would be. But she's, you know, she jumps in with both feet and she did. And she just got on with it and she delivered and, and very quickly. This wasn't like within a day or two, you know, she found, you know, she, or she took a few days to find, she just got stuck in and she knew who the character was and she just, she just was brave. I mean, you, you know, when actor, when I say actors brave, I don't, you know, we know what bravery is, particularly in the current time, but, but I'm just saying, you know, she was brave with her kind of, her, her ability. She, she wasn't phased by the environment she was in. She knew she had an opportunity to shine. She had the ability to shine and she just went, bang, I'm in. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm Rose and I'm going to just make it my Rose. And, and there is no question in anyone's mind that, that she didn't do anything else. That's exactly what she did. She's terrific. She's a star and she has deserved everything she's got from this. I think it's great for her. Well, we've talked so far almost exclusively about the episode, Rose. Um, yeah. But for now, we're going to take a brief break and then we'll come back and talk in more detail about your other two episodes. So for now, Keith, yeah. thanks very much. <laughs> 